so let us start with the rheumatic section here and a question was posted on the channel which most of you must have guessed it correctly that the correct answer was rheumatoid arthritis and we'll see what those images meant and what was the correct answer for that question which was asked about the drug causing retinal toxicity so yes we'll look at the pathophysiology we'll look at the symptoms the deformities and extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis and everything about rheumatoid arthritis so this is going to be a great video and also rheumatoid arthritis is a marking question in our university exam so please watch the video till the end it will be of great benefit to you so let's start so yeah so these were the images which were posted uh, on the question so yeah let's look at the first image this is what we see a red eye here in the image and red eye involvement in rheumatoid arthritis there can be two things either you can have keratoconjunctivitis or you can have episcleritis so this image here is of episcleritis and is not conjunctivitis or keratoconjunctivitis so why is this not conjunctivitis because clinically how do you differentiate a patient uh, imagine a patient presents to you with a red eye how will you differentiate whether this is episcleritis or conjunctivitis so firstly conjunctivitis is uh, associated with discharge even if it is even if it is allergic it would be associated with watery mucoid discharge and yes bacterial would be associated with uh, purulent discharge and even the other forms like vernal keratoconjunctiv uh, conjunctivitis is associated with uh, what you call a uh, ropey stringy discharge and flicton or conjunctivitis would have a flicton so it is easy to differentiate and what exactly is episcleritis is basically the inflammation of the connective tissue over the sclera is what we call as episcleritis so yeah first this image represents episcleritis next image what what we have is a deformity in the hand where the distal uh, interphalangeal joint is flexed and the proximal interphalangeal joint is extended so this is how the deformity looks like so this is the distal interphalangeal joint flexed and this joint is extended which we call as swan neck deformity so this image represents swan neck deformity next we have this image of an x-ray which uh, in the left lung which shows a pleural effusion so how do we figure out that this is a pleural effusion Firstly, this is not a mild pleural effusion because it has risen up above. So this is uh, in mild pleural effusion, you would just find obliteration of the costophrenic angle. But here what you see is a meniscus is seen. Yeah. And in the background where you have episcleritis and swan neck deformity, it is very easy to figure out that this is pleural effusion uh, in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, next, what we have here is this image shows a hand and these are rheumatoid nodules which are seen in uh, rheumatoid arthritis and these are usually seen at pressure points so it can be seen at it can be seen on the elbow and also on the hand which represent which is the image shown here so these are uh, associated with poor prognosis and the disease activity uh, in rheumatoid arthritis so yes we have seen what uh, the four images represent and now here i have drawn a schematic diagram i have made a video of uh, the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis please go through this this will help you a lot and it will also help you in writing pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis in your exam let's have a look at the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis and this is a, a schematic diagram where we'll see how the cells get activated and how it finally leads to destruction of the bone so let's go so this is a host protein which due to environmental and genetic factors like triggers gets modified and uh, what happens is usually the proteins are citrullinated so the amino acids are replaced by citrulline which we call as citrullinated these modified proteins are presented by the dendritic cells to the t cells and then these t cells stimulate the b cells so then here this is a stim uh, this is the b cell which then gets activated and this activated b cell leads to the formation of plasma cells which you just see now yeah so these are the plasma cells which lead to the formation of on autoantibodies and these autoantibodies form immune complexes. These immune complexes get deposited in the blood vessel leading to vasculitis in rheumatoid arthritis. Also the T cells are now activated and these T cells lead to the formation of TNF alpha. These TNF alpha stimulate the fibroblasts and also they release TNF alpha IL-6 and IL-7. And these IL-6, IL-7 stimulate the macrophages. Also the T cells activate the rank ligand which then activate the osteoclast which finally lead to bone resorption. 
and here this is a joint diagram we can see this inner part is a cartilage then we have the synovium and outermost is a joint capsule so this is the synovial fluid here in the joint and what actually happens is there is inflammation of the synovium which we call as synovitis which is the main pathology and these are the blood vessels so these are the blood vessels with the infiltrating cells which we call as pannus and this inflammation is responsible for pain in rheumatoid arthritis now these fibroblasts they activate mmp and adamts which finally lead to cartilage destruction and so cartilage destruction synovitis pannus is actually the main thing in rheumatoid arthritis yeah, so we have seen now these images and the, also the pathophysiology. I hope you all understood the pathophysiology. So one by one now we'll look at all the deformities which are seen in rheumatoid arthritis. So yeah, let, we have images here. Look at the images and where not possible I have drawn the deformity, uh, the images which I could not cut. So yeah, let's look here at the deformities. deformities yeah let us see the extra articular manifestations which are seen in rheumatoid arthritis so the way you all saw deformities let us see one by one what happens in rheumatoid arthritis other than involvement of the joints let's go watching this video if we are uh, asked to define rheumatoid arthritis how would we do so so yeah let's see what how to define rheumatoid arthritis so it is a chronic it is inflammatory it is bilaterally symmetrical it is predominantly peripheral predominantly small joint erosive polyarthritis so this is the way how we would find uh, these are the adjectives which we would use to define rheumatoid arthritis and uh, so yeah, let's go through the treatment quickly. So which are the main drugs used? Uh, the main drugs, uh, the main stay of rheumatoid arthritis are the uh, DMARDs, which are disease modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs. And uh, these involve methotrexate, these involve sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine, and leflunomide, and azathioprine. So, and you can read from the books, which are the other drugs used. So these are the main stay. You start with these drugs. And if they don't work, we go to biologics, which are the T and alpha inhibitors, which are used in rheumatoid arthritis so i hope you all understood rheumatoid arthritis so please keep watching these videos and it will be of great help we'll be making more videos on the marking questions in a university exam so watch this i hope you will be able to write complete answer after watching this video so yeah keep sharing keep liking and keep subscribing to uh, my channel and it will be of great help so thank you